Hello, soon to be licensed nurse practitioners. This is Ms. Cohen and welcome to the nurse practitioner board's review non clinical content part a upon request students have asked please to upload non clinical content for all my ANCC takers and here you go I've spent weekends uploading this content and trying to make it as easy to comprehend. I'm trying to make it fun so it's not so black and white boring. Um, and I hope that it makes it easier for you to remember the content as you go into the exam. Some of this stuff can be a little bit boring to memorize. That is why I have added pictures and examples in trying to make it a little bit more enthusiastic, a little bit more colorful, a little bit more fun in your learning. So this is part A. There will be additional parts coming soon after this one, but I had to start somewhere and, and give you something. So I hope you enjoy it. And let's, let me show you what we're going to review. So you have to feel comfortable with ethical concepts. So here's your terminology. How exciting. Accountability, autonomy, beneficence, confidentiality, dignity, fidelity, justice, non-maleficence, utilitarianism, can't even say that, veracity, okay? You should know their meanings um, and how to disting distinguish one from the other and know examples of them. So I have done that for you and uploaded it with pictures and kept it really simple, all right? Really simple, straight to the point. So it's easy for you to remember. We have to talk about some groups, the American Nurses Association, and the Code of Ethics for Nurses. We'll talk about that without putting you to sleep. And we're gonna talk about the Health Insurance Part Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA, which I know you know so well, but just a little refresher. Um, we also have to talk about, oh, this is the best, health insurance, said no one ever. Anyways, it's not that bad, actually. The Affordable Care Act, um, Recon Reconciliation Act of 1985, or COBRA, uh, Medicare versus Medicaid, managed care, HMO versus PPO and hospice. This stuff can truly put you to sleep. But again, let me show you how I put it together so that it's not, not so bad. It's not so bad if you keep it simple, right? We're going to talk about some legal terms. Mm, how do you say that? Ombudsman. What is that, German? whatever, but you have to know what it means. How about guardian ad litem, litem, for sure. Advanced health directives and power of attorney. You have to know their meanings, but in this review, I'm also gonna teach you a trick on how to find definitions to terms that you may not even know what they are and use common sense into finding the right definition and then process of elimination, especially for ANCC because they're known to throw in some uh, match select, you know, kind of like drag and drops. This would be a great example for legal terms, match the term with the definition. So I'm excited to show you these four and how to figure them out without really knowing what they mean. So, that's exciting. And then also we're gonna talk about accreditation, like the Joint Commission. We're gonna talk about Sentinel event reporting. And in here, we have to discuss root cause analysis versus outcome analysis. So let's get to it, all right? We're gonna keep it fun. We're gonna keep it short and we're gonna keep it interesting. I'm not gonna make you fall asleep. Let's start with ethics. We have to talk about all the terms, okay? So accountability. Accountability, healthcare providers are responsible for their actions and choices and the consequences of those actions. So the beauty about this, again, is that some of the stuff can be common sense. So you don't have to memorize it. It's a little bit more gray in its concept, but it makes sense. If you're accountable for something, you are responsible for something. That's what it means. So a good example would be a patient complains of chest pain the nurse practitioner diagnoses her with GERD. Then for some reason, the patient ended up in the emergency room and was diagnosed with a myocardial infarction. All right, we do know that some chest pain could be heart attack, but it could also be GERD. Okay, so the NP messed up, 
but she's going to be accountable, show accountability and own her actions and say, I was wrong. I misdiagnosed. So what are the consequences? All right. Fire, you know, put me on a stick and, and, and kill me to fire or something. I don't know. But accountability, be accountable for your actions, right? Common sense. How about autonomy? Autonomy. Look at this guy. This guy is pretty proud of himself. Why? Because he represents autonomy, the ability of the person to make their own decisions. Autonomy from auto, right? From self. An example, BRCA2 mutations in the genes, right? BRCA2 breast cancer patient decide, this one decides to have her ovaries removed prophylactically in the provision of ovarian cancer. Now, that's something that, that happens. If you are BRCA2 positive, you're more at a higher risk of getting ovarian cancer. So it's usually recommended for the ovaries to come out. But here, her sister tells you that she doesn't want her to have surgery because she thinks the patient is not making the right decision. Who cares what the sister wants? This is the patient's decision. The patient is representing her, herself, auto, auto, herself the ability of the person to make her own decisions, all right? Autonomy. What about beneficence? I like to compare beneficence versus non-maleficence, and there's a big difference because beneficence from the word, look at the prefix, right? Bene, meaning good, bien in Spanish, bene. Is that Italian? I don't even know. All right, bene, good obligation to promote good, to promote bene, to promote, promote bien, do good. Look at this guy, he's helping, he's doing benefits, he's grabbing the lady, helping her go up the hill. A better example would be like holding a dying patient's hand. You're doing good from your heart or helping a patient with medication education. You get a patient who comes and they have no idea how to take the medication. You recognize that and you go out of your way to do a good, to teach the patient to do bene, to do bien, to do good, okay? How about confidentiality? I mean, that's an easy one, right? Look at the doctor talking to the patient over here saying, your information is safe with me and, and it won't be shared without your permission, all right? That's, that's that confidentiality. They're building that trust. It's the obligation to protect the client's identity, personal information, test results, medical records, conversations, and any other health records, anything. It's that trust. You have confidence from the word confidence, confidentiality. So an example, a nurse practitioner is not allowed to give health information to a patient's relative without patient's authorization. Confidence. You can trust me. I won't let you down. That's an easy one, right? How about dignity? Dignity. This is another word that we use commonly, right, on an everyday kind of um, vocabulary, the quality or state of being worthy, honored, or esteemed. I mean, look at this guy. You know, we want to provide dignity. The example is making hospital gowns properly secured to cover the patient's back. We're protecting their dignity. Dignity. We don't want them to be walking, showing off their behind, right? We want them to be honored and worthy and esteemed. So dignity. Fidelity. Fidelity. The obligation to maintain trust in a relationship, faithfulness, loyalty to a patient, building a trusting relationship. I mean, talk about the insurance company named Fidelity, right? They chose the name very, very well because they want you to trust them. They want you to have this faithfulness, this loyalty. They want you to know they're loyal to you. It's a great insurance company name. But in this case, when we talk about nursing, an example would be patient requests not to reveal the terminal diagnosis to the family, and the nurse practitioner holds that information from the patient's family. Fidelity, obligation to maintain trust. Again, think about the insurance company. That's what they should be providing us. All right, justice, another word that we use on our everyday language. All right, the act of being just. Justice comes from the word just or fair, right? Treat and provide care fairly to all patients. All right, treat a patient equally regardless of sexual orientation, religion, color, 
background. Okay, a good example is a frequent flyer alcoholic patient comes to the emergency room for evaluation. He or she is treated the same with the same respect as the other patients. Justice, fairness, all right? You can be gay, you can be tall, you can be fat, you can be alcoholic, you can be a drug addict. I don't care. You can be black, white. We're going to be just and we're going to treat everybody the same. Justice. Non-maleficence. Check out my picture. You're not going to kill the mosquito. You're going to blow it all away from your hand. You're going to flick it gently so it flies away without any harm. Because the word non-maleficence is to obligation to do no harm. You see the difference between beneficence, which is to do good, to do bien, to do bene, with the obligation to do no harm. There's a difference between doing good and doing no harm, right? We're not going to kill the mosquito because it's on your skin, all right? I would, but we're not going to do that right now. Patient has allergies to penicillin and tells you, ah, don't worry about it. Go ahead and prescribe penicillin. It'll be all right. No, you choose to prescribe a macrolide because you know that it will cause harm. So you're going to cause no harm by prescribing something that doesn't cause any harm, okay? Do not kill the mosquito. Just blow it off. Don't do harm. If you found this review helpful, I welcome you to come and check the remaining of the review at cohenreview.teachable.com. In this website, you'll find other reviews that I have uploaded covering many systems reviews in, with the purpose of helping you study uh, and pass your boards. In addition to the reviews, I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're not sure if you're ready to take the exam or not, come and shoot me an email. Let's talk about it. I'll set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting where I get to assess your readiness to take the boards and I can give you some kind of study guide into what your weaknesses are and your strengths are and we can talk in more detail so I can better guide you into studying for the nurse practitioner boards. So best of luck with your studies and if you have any questions feel free to email me at shiracohen at gmail.com. Good luck.